In this presentation, let us understand the data structure called list. A list is a very important and a basic data structure that is found in all the prog programming languages. A list helps us to store and process the group of data. Lists in Python is very similar to an array which is available in C, Java and C Sharp. The similarity is the access method. In all the languages, the list element is being accessed with an index operator. That means a square brackets. Similarly, the list is a sequence of elements. The same concept is being used in all the programming languages. The difference lies in the dynamicity of lists in Python, which means that the elements can be added as well as deleted at runtime thereby the list size gets enhanced or reduced with the respective operations. Like a string, a list is a sequence of values. A value can be a numeric or a character or it can be a string. The values in the list are called the elements, elements or also sometimes called as items. How to create a list? The simple way is to enclose the elements with the square bracket or the index operator. In this example, we have a list having four elements 10 20 30 and 40 and underneath we have one more example wherein we have a list having the elements of type a string the special feature of a list in python is it is not homogeneous in nature we can have heterogeneous types within the list means that we can have a list with integer, floating point, character, string or even we can have an element which is another list. In this example we have four elements. This is a string element, floating point element, integer element and last element itself is a list. It says that the python allows nesting of lists. Uh, element of a list can be another list. It is possible to create a list with no elements called empty list. To create empty list we have to use the empty bracket or the index operator without any index. We can also assign a values to a list means that you can initialize a list with elements. Here we have a first list containing string elements. We have three elements. Second example we have a list numbers with two elements empty. How to access the list elements? the use a bracket operator or index operator to access the list elements like what we do in string and the index has to be a number or it can be an expression 
which results in integer value. Remember in Python, the list index starts from 0. Unlike strings, lists are mutable. It means that the pro we can change the elements as well as we can change the order of elements present in the list. In string, it is not possible to change the characters or even order of characters of a string. As I said lists are mutable. How do we change the elements? We have to use a bracket operator, index operator on the left hand side of the assignment which identifies that the element of a list at a particular index will get a new value. For example, if we have a list with two elements 17 and 123 and we want to change the first element that is 123 with a new value 5 then write the statements numbers list variable with the index operator bracket operator with the index and assign a new value on the right hand side of the expression we can also think uh, list as a relationship between indices and the elements also called as a mapping. It means that each index maps to one of the elements and the indices works the same way as uh, strings. Means that any integer or the integer valued expression can be used as an index. If you try to read or write an element that doesn't exist within the list then you get an index error. If the index has a negative value then it counts backward from the end of the list like uh, strings. We can also use the operator in to check whether the given element is present in a list. For example we have a list with three strings and we want to check whether Adam is present in the list. Just write the expression Adam in cheeses. If Adam is present in the list, then it returns a logical value true. And similarly, if we try this second example, if we write this expression, this results in false because the element as mentioned here is not present in the list. So remember in operator can be used with the list like strings. It checks the presence of an element in the list and results true if the element presents present in the list or else results in a logical value false. How do we traverse the list? Common way is to use a for loop and the syntax is for the item variable in list variable. Try to access the individual elements through the index variable. So here the index variable represents the actual element of the list. If you want to update the elements, access and update the elements, then better to use two functions which are associated with the list. One is a length which returns the number of elements present in the list as well as the function range which gives the range of indices for a given lower and upper bound mentioned in the function range. 
if you want to change the elements of a given list again you use a for statement like this in the example for i in the range of length of numbers here if the length of numbers is 4 then range is from 0 to 3 4 elements 0 1 2 3 4 elements likewise we can even specify the lower boundary as well as the upper boundary if the lower boundary for the range is not mentioned it is impl implied that the lower bound is zero remember for loop over empty list never executes the body if we have if you use the for statement like this the print statement will not be executed since nesting of lists is allowed in python the list element which is considered as another list is counted as a single element for example if we have a list like this the length of list is written as 4 1 2 this is the third element is another list and this is the fourth element which is numeric list list operations we can use plus operator to concatenate two lists and to generate a new list for example if you have a with three elements b with three more elements and if we write c is equal to a plus b which creates a list with six elements similarly the operator star is used to repeat the list items for example if we have a list with one element a zero star four repeats the element zero four times it creates a list with four elements which are zeros if we apply star operator with these three elements then we get a list with nine elements wherein one two three are repeated three times it is possible to apply the slice operator on lists if we have a list t with six elements a b c d e f it is possible to extract the elements b and c by writing t of 1 colon 3 the slice is from index 1 up to 3 without 3 that is in at elements at 1 and 2 if we omit the first index then all the elements from the beginning are considered till the second index that is 0 1 2 3 up to 4 and if you omit second index then all the elements from 3 onwards index 3 onwards are considered for this slice 0 1 2 3 that means D E F D E F are extracted from this slide or slice uh, from this slice three colon. If you omit both the indices, then all the elements are extracted like this. If you just write the colon within the index operator brackets, then all the elements are extracted. Note that it is always better to make a copy of the list before performing any operations on the list because lists are mutable.
it is possible to manipulate the segment of a list by specifying the slice. In this example, if we want to change the second and third element, index that index 1 and 2, we need to specify the slice as t of 1 colon 3 equal to the new values x and y. With this, we can manipulate or change the set of elements in one expression by specifying suitable slice, list slice. The Python provides two methods to insert elements or to extend or to increase the size of the list. The first method is append which always adds a new element to the end of the list. For example, if we have a list with three elements A, B, C and we want to add the new element D, simply write T dot append. Append is a method with the explicit parameter representing the new element. Similarly, we have another function extend which takes lists as an argument and appends all the elements present in the list argument to the implicit list which calls which makes a call to this function. For example, we have the list T1 here, ABC and the second list T2 with D and E and we want to extend this T1 with the elements of T2. Simply write T1, this is a list that we want to enlarge, extend with the method extend with a parameter which is the name of the list and now the augmented list T1 has five elements the elements of T1 as well as elements of the T2 the T1 the length of T1 now becomes five we can also use a method called sort which arranges elements from low to Hi. This sort method returns none, but it sorts the elements present in the given list. Here we have five elements in the list T, and if we apply the method sort t dot sort arranges these elements into elements alphabetically from a to e remember if you try to assign t dot sort to another list the list the lhs list will gets a value none because sort method will not return any value any value so always do not assign the t dot sort to any of the list variable or to of the boolean variables How to delete the elements from a list? There are three ways. First is the method called pop. When to use this method pop? If you know the index of the element of the ele element to be deleted, then use the method pop. For example, 
here we have a list with three elements t is equal to a b c and i want to remove the second element that is element b and i want to delete and return that element what i need to write is x equal to the list var variable t dot a method pop with the parameter which indicates the index of the element to be deleted that is b 0 1 b and now after this once the statement is executed x is equal to t dot pop of 1 the x contains the value that is b ultimately the pop method deletes the element as well as returns the deleted element if you don't provide the index for the pop method if you just write x is equal to t dot pop with empty argument list then it deletes the last element and it returns the same element to the variable which is found on the LHS of the assignment instruction. So in this case if we write x is equal to t dot pop we get the list with t with only a b a b and c is being removed and returned to assigned to variable x. And the second method is the usage of delete that is a d del operator. When to use this del operator? If you don't require the removed value from the list then use for example we have a list t with three elements and I want to delete the second element that is b just apply the del operator like this del t of 1 remember del operator will not return the deleted element and the third method is is the application of remove function a remove method when to use this method you don't know the index of the element and you know the element in that case use the method remove for example if we have the list t with three elements and I know the element I do not know the position of the element in that case use this remove method t dot list variable dot remove with argument representing that element that's the element to be deleted again remember that this remove method will not return any value it returns none or void if you want to remove or delete more than one element you can use del operator with the in this example t has six elements a to f and i want to delete the slice the elements from B to E I need to specify the slice as T of 1 1 2 5 that is up to 4 the elements from B to E are deleted with this statement DL T of 1 colon 5 only A and F are uh, now present after the application of delete operator 
Similarly, you can use a slice operator to delete first few elements as well as to delete the last few elements from the list. So this example, delete T of colon 4, delete first 4 elements that is 0, 1, 2, 3. Only E and F are found after execution of this instruction. Similarly, if you want to delete last three elements, D, F, I need to specify D, L, T, F, 3, colon. That is 0, 1, 2, 3. From this position onwards, 3 onwards, the elements D, E, F are deleted. Only first three A, B, C are are found after execution of this instruction DL T of lists and functions. There are number of built-in functions that can be used with lists. Here we have a, a small set of functions. The first is the length which gives the number of elements present in the list that is six in this case we have six elements in the list called numbers nums and the max function returns the maximum element in terms of magnitude that is present in the list here in this 74 a minimum function returns the minimum element in the list similarly a function sum returns the sum of the elements present in the list and if you know the sum and length we can easily calculate the average of a, of a list. Now we will write a simple program to calculate the average of n numbers. What we have to do is, first we have to create an empty list. That is the first step that we need to do. Then, go on read the elements from the console. Whatever that you read with the input is a string. Try to convert that string into integer or a floating point. And go on read these values and append the red value to the list. Initially it is empty. For the second iteration we will be having first one element, second iteration two elements and so on. And terminate this reading by entering some fictitious value or some a message. For example done or exit or break. So once this loop is terminated, the odd loop is terminated, we apply the built-in function sum as well as length to calculate the. So here is a program. So what we are doing is we initially create an empty list. So you can also use uh, square brackets. Either you use square brackets or the function list so this list function with no arguments create empty list so you have a num list is an empty list we have a odd loop here while true this will be the body of this loop will be executed okay and the first statement within the while is a reading a number which is a string, INP is a string. And if this red string is something uh, special value like control Z or control D or exit or done. So here we are using the string done. If the input string is done, you terminate the loop. That means no more reading of uh, elements. Okay. And if it is not done, 
you convert the red string the value to a float and then append that value to the list with append function num list dot append value so do this till you enter the text or string called done so once this while loop is terminated so you calculate the average by simply using the built-in method sum divided by length so now you have a average of n elements that are read from the console working with the strings and lists as you know string is a sequence of characters and a list is a is also a sequence of values but the list of character is not the same as a string and if you want to convert a string to a list of characters we have to use a built-in function called list as I told you in the previous slides a list function or method with no argument creates the empty list and if you supply a argument to a list function which is a string variable it creates or it returns a list of characters that are present in the string for example we have a string s with four characters representing uh, word spam and if we use a method list with an argument the string s what it does is this list method creates a list of characters that are present in the string s so now if we print t so t is a list so return of list is always the function list is always a list if you don't specify the parameter then it creates an empty list list with no elements if it takes the argument which is a string it creates the list of characters so the result of this if you print t you get spam as the individual characters so the list function breaks the given string into individual character let us think about breaking a sentence having the words that means a multiple strings into a list of words how to do this to break the string of words into a list of strings we have a function in python called split what this the function split does the split function takes the optional argument which is a delimiter that is being that is to be used as a boundary for a string or for the word if you don't specify the optional argument that is a delimiter the space is considered as a delimiter and the list of words are created by considering the space as a as a boundary for the string or for the word let us consider this string the sentence pinning for pinning for uh, the george and if we apply the split function without any argument the space is considered as a delimiter and the split function splits the string s s dot split splits the 
string into words by taking space as a boundary for each of the words so the split function will returns four words without space and creates a list of words so if you print t we'll get the list of words pinning for and so on and once we have a list of words you can access or process individual strings by specifying the index operator and so on we can also use a other character as a delimiter let us take up one more example wherein we split the string based on the delimiter you let us take the string s with the spam spam hyphen spam and so on and here we consider delimiter as a hyphen now i want to create a list of words based on the word boundary hyphen what i need to write is s dot split with the parameter delimiter which represents hyphen so i'll be having now a list of words with three words same they are a spam and spam and so on there is also a function called join which is the inverse of split what it does is it takes the list of strings and concatenates these list elements and remember this join is a string method so uh, so you need to invoke that join method on the string variable or on the character which is a delimiter and pass the list of elements to be concatenated as a argument so we'll take up the example we have a list now t is a list having four words 1 2 3 4 and i want to create a sentence having these four words and the space in between so i need to define a delimiter as a space then i call a function join on this delimiter space delimiter dot join of list variable containing list of words to be concatenated and the result of this so you can always assign it to a string s is equal to delimiter dot join of t returns the string call having all these four string elements and if you want to create the if you want to concatenate these strings without a spaces in between then you make you write delimiter as empty string don't provide a space in between single quotes or double quotes that means delimiter is considered as a empty character or a empty string and no space is provided between four words while during one application of uh, the split term join method as well as uh, other string functions is uh, is processing interesting lines so one example is let us say we have a email log of a, having all the emails received from different senders and assume that the log format takes this form the word from the space and then the sender email id the complete valid email id then space the day of email sent day there is a saturday and then uh, month a date and uh, the time there is a time stamp hour minute second and uh, even the year 
and if we have a log file containing this email received or sent information uh, email received information along with the other contents how to identify the date of email sent from this uh, email logs so if you analyze this you have uh, one sentence like this present in the file of a log maybe a log file containing other lines of text also and uh, you will find such lines as a email sent information and uh, this email sent information always you can see it starts with from and between every item of this log there is a space there is a space there is a space you can see this is the time stamp and then again space and the year and let us say if we are interested to retrieve this saturday on the day of uh, uh, which day this email has been sent so you can see this saturday is always found in the email line of text in the position 3 that is first position second position and the third position then how to if you have a huge file containing these this kind of information along with the other information how to identify the the day of email sent by different uh, the email senders so how do we solve this so the mechanism or uh, the solution is like this first you open a file in the read mode read the file line by line don't read at once using a read method use a for statement you read the file line by line now you pass the line first what you need to do is try to remove the empty spaces that are found on the left hand side of the text whether the line uh, if the line starts with the tab or number of blank spaces try to remove it and uh, we have a function that is a strip which removes the empty spaces from both the sides left side as well as right side of the string remove the chop of the spaces then try to identify a line of text which starts with from so there's a method called starts with so you can always check whether the line of text after removing spaces is starts from the from yes if it starts from the word from then you are sure that it is a email sent information and in that case you split this string entire line of text using a split with the delimiter space and you store the list of words in a list uh, the list of words returned from the split function into a list and then access the third element first to second third and that becomes the day on which the email that has been sent by the sender let us look at the, the solution in python we open a file in a read mode this text file contains the email information email sent information along with other information also so we have a file handle and read the file line by line remove the blank spaces from both the ends left side as well as right side and if the line after removing space doesn't starts with from you don't have to consider that line because you are not interested in those lines because that line is not started with the word from so you are not interested so you don't do this processing 
that's what we use the word continue continue you skip all these following statements if the line doesn't start with from you continue if it starts with the from line dot starts with from is true if this is true you split the line so you have a now list of words words is a list containing the words and try to print the second word there is the index second there is a third word so you will get the day on which the email that is being sent by the sender objects values and the data structure the relationship let us consider two strings a equal to banana and b is equal to banana a is a string having same value sequence of characters b is a string having a characters banana both a and b have a value that means sequence of characters b a n a n a by looking at this a and b these two assignments we say that a and b refer to the same string but we do not know whether both a and b refer to the same object we know that object is actually a memory layout of a value with these two statements we do not know whether a and b is a logical name refer to the same memory having a value banana how do we get that information whether the variable name refer to the same object in memory for that we have an operator called is operator so is operator works is a binary operator works on two variables or object names it results a boolean value true if a and b the variable names refer to the same object if a and b refer to different objects then it returns false so in this case a and b are two strings having same value and the execution of a is b instruction results in a value true to a list 1 2 and we execute the statement like this b is equal to a it means that we are assigning a list with elements 1 2 3 to a new variable b and in this case the a is being assigned to b a new variable b and if we execute the statements b is a or a is b now it returns true because a is the object that is being created in the memory and when we assign this object to another variable only a reference is being created no separate memory for the the to the elements of a are not created for b both a and b refer to the same memory location where the elements 1 2 3 are being stored in the in the memory that's why we call a and b are the references and an object with more than one reference has normally has more than one name in that case we say that the object is aliased so if you have a is equal to 1 2 3 and we have other references to access this these values in that case this object a list object is called uh, as aliased object 
if the ls objects object is mutable whatever the changes that you make to make to uh, made through one reference affects the other for example if you write if you change the value a first element with the help of reference b it changes the value of a also 17 2 3 because a and b refers to the same memory in general it is always safer to avoid aliasing when you are working with mutable objects for example when you work with lists try to avoid creating aliases like b is equal to a for immutable objects like strings aliasing is not as much of a problem because the programmer is not allowed to change the elements of the immutable object and even if you create b is equal to a uh, or a is equal to b and uh, a programmer makes try to alter the elements programmatically will be will not be allowed by the interpreter because the object that is being in question is immutable wherein the programmer is not allowed to change the contents so remember always avoid creating aliases for mutable objects like lists and you are you can create aliases for immutable objects like string lists and functions let us understand how to pass a list to a function as an argument as well as how to return a list to a caller when we pass a list to a function the function gets the reference to the list it means that if the function modifies the list parameter the changes are seen in the caller also let me demonstrate this mechanism by taking a simple example consider a list of letters with three elements and let me define a function called delete head which takes the list as an argument and returns nothing the purpose of this function is to delete the first element you can see there is a delete operator delete t of 0 which deletes the element and upon calling this function by passing this list call letters let us print the list we get only the characters b and d because when we pass the list as an argument to a function a new reference called t is created for the letters and any change that is made to the object containing ac either through a letters in the main program or through an alias or reference t in the function changes the object it is important to distinguish between the operations that modify lists and the operation that create a new list the list operation or list function 
there is a method called append always modifies the existing list it will not create a new list for example we have a list t1 with two elements let me append this list with one more element 3 and then let me assign t1 to t2 after append and now we get the t1 with three values 1 2 3 and t2 with none because the append function does not return any value it returns none or void and if we use the operator plus concatenation operator with the list it creates a new list and there has to be a left hand side a list variable to hold the newly created list that is by concatenating the two lists two or more lists this difference is important when you write functions that are supposed to modify lists so we need to ensure that the appropriate usage of list function modifies the existing list or it creates the new list for example if we take up this function bad delete head which takes the list parameter t and has a, a trivial function body which takes the slice starting from the first element till the end and this slice operator always creates a new list this t is equal to t of 1 colon creates a new list and this is the argument and this argument is alias to the actual parameter thus whatever the changes that is being done to this t he has no effect on the formal argument and to in order to delete the first element from the list we can have an alternative function that creates and returns the new list so we can create the we can take the slice excluding the first element and then return this list to the caller like this tail of letters this tail of letters is a function which takes the list and the tail function removes the first element and returns the new list not the same argument it returns the new list which is being assigned to a new list called rest thus we find a new list called with b and c and if you print letters then again letters list remains with the size 3 with the elements a b c these are the few exercise programs which are very simple i have already communicated these uh, programs to you kindly design the logic and try to execute these programs let me take up the first program listed in this slide this program requires a little bit of analysis I have already communicated the description file which gives the description about the data set the number of columns and the caption of each of the column and also the air file self noise data set file 
here the two columns of a data set are of importance one column is angle of attack and second one is a scaled sound pressure so we need to identify these column columns in the data set before writing a program the logic is quite simple you have to open the data set file in python with the open method then read the file line by line one line having so many columns the data with spaces what you have to do is try to split the line of text based on the delimiter space and get the list of items items of type floating point or integer and try to refer the specific column of angle of attack whether the angle of attack listed in that line of text is within the angle of attack that is being specified while reading from the console if that angle of attack is within that range then take out the appropriate scaled sound pressure from another column and go on add the scaled sound pressure wherever a line contains the column representing angle of attacks is within the given range once you have the sum then a mean time while while reading the uh, while checking the range of angle of attack for each of the rows you create a maintain a counter so that you get the total number of rows which belongs to that uh, rows having the angle of attacks pertaining to that uh, given range thereby you can get the average total sum divided by the number of uh, rows that comes under the given range of angle of attack and the next program is quite simple uh, reading the numbers from the keyboard store it in an array and then get the average and the third one is a selection sort so this requires one function which swaps the elements you can pass the array through a reference and you can swap the elements these are the three resource links wherein you will find more information about uh, lists and list processing in python especially i recommend w3 schools use that website it has got a, a editor python editor as well as the interpreter you can test the segment of codes online and also you can write a simple programs and you can execute them without having any editor or interpreter python installed in your system apart from w3 schools other two are also very informative website go through these websites and uh, gain uh, more knowledge and uh, and acquire uh, more skills in handling lists in python uh, thank you